the oh, yeah. there we go. And we are now recording. Welcome. This is session three of Wednesday, November 9th, Pulpcon. Lubosh, it's all yours. Take it away. Hey, I'm Lubosh, and I'm a software engineer at Red Hat, working on a Pulp project currently based in Brno. And today I'm going to talk about content signing and verification and how did we implement specific workflows regarding to the signing in pulp and in pulp container in particular. So at first, let me begin with, the, with an explanation of why signing content is important. Basically, the purpose of signing content is to provide, provide a way of attesting the provenance of the content. For instance, organizations which want to be certain that the content they use comes from a trusted source can rely on signatures provided, for instance, by their development team. So if you are a company that uses specific images and want to fiddle with them, we want to be sure that this content is really authentic and comes from a trusted source, you can rely on signatures. Uh, furthermore, if a signature contains also additional data like digest or SHA of images, you can also provide a way of assuring the integrity of data. So uh, there is there is just given an approval or just a way of uh, considering of, or attesting the consistent, consistency of the data through, throughout the whole life cycle. And in pulp, the notion of signatures was basically introduced in 2020, where we implemented the concept of metadata signing where we allowed administrators to sign metadata of RPM and DBM packages. Along with that, the next year we improved the workflows for signing those metadata. And lately and recently, we added also a support for signing content to the container and Ansible plugin. And in the PAL container plugin, the following feature set is available we allow users or more specifically administrators to sync images with their original signatures from a remote repository. And as you can see, there is one use case per each feature set or feature available. For instance, for when the content is coming from a trusted source, there is no need just to re-sign or sign again the content once you are just looking for the keys provided by the Red Hat company. And when your pulp installation is working like a proxy, you're just consuming signatures from the Red Hat that were synced or mirrored to the pulp registry. Also, you can see, see images without the original, original signatures. And after that, you can just sign that content manually in a centralized way. So there is another, another use case that if you are not sure that the content comes from a trusted source and want to give IT department a possibility to verify the content and sign additionally, it, you can just sync the images without original signatures. And after that, you sign that content. Also, we allow push pushing signed images from local storage. And in this case, different users push different signed images to the registry to enable further attestations of the source where we can, or other users just can uniquely identify the source of the content that was pushed. Also, uh, another feature is to sign existing images within pulp repositories. So imagine you have already mirrored a couple of repositories to the pulp registry. 
and you now want to sign all of their present content in a centralized way retrospectively you just run a signing service and sign it uh, in this slides i will just gently provide an introduction to the signing services with regards to pop container and signing services are basically scripts that run as background tasks and under the hood they use scopio which is a utility, utility that can use for signing images and with the current workflows we allow users or administrators to to create signing images via the django admin interface and as you can see you just specify the class name script and then gpg key id and your signing service will be automatically initialized and configured inside the pulp for further utilization mm. and in order to sign images with rep within a repository you can just issue the following api post requests and as you can see you just specify repository and signing service and you just run a background task that will sign all content within a repository and you can later just provide a way for users to verify whether the content was signed by you or other authorities you can also push signed images and as you can see in the second bullet in the second bullet point you can just run podman push and specify the identity of your signing key just before pushing the image and with that you are not pushing only the image but you are also pushing a signature that can be used to attest the provenance of the source that you are the owner and with that, you also don't have to forget about setting a verification policy that is stored in ETC containers policy that JSON. And users are usually consuming content from different sources. And with this policy, administrators can define or declare what ways of consuming content is allowed and available at the current workflow so for instance as you can see on this slide i have just specified one repository version or one repository rel 7 rem Unimo, and once there is such a policy set only users who just have correct admin gpg public key available can consume the content after the uh, the verification policy is set and with that i'm going to demonstrate some of the use cases and some of the workflows that are currently implemented in top container and we will take a look about ways of how to configure a global signing service it can be used for signing images or in a centralized way how to sign images with that newly created service so for instance when there is a policy or requirement to consume content with the need of to verify two kinds of signatures just one signature from your it department and another signature from the original vendor you just should create can create verification policy in this way and you just can type two uh, two on you just create two entries to the verification policy also i'll show how to mirror a repository with its original signatures and how to add new signatures to the pushed image and i will show you how to set up a signature verification policy 
So go to the terminal first. Can you see the command line? Yeah, it looks good. Yes. <laughs> cool. So let me first just show you how to sync a repository with uh, with uh, uh, with images already signed by a Red Hat authority. So first, as usually, we are just going to create a new repository, then we will just point to the up, to the upstream URL of a uh, registry that .com registry. And after that, we will specify the six star, which is the place from where Pulp is supposed to pull signatures that basically were used for signing or just so signatures are just metadata that were created after signing those specific images. So let me run this first. It will take some time to sync those signatures and images first. Uh -uh. And as you can see, from the pulp's perspective, signatures are just another type of content that are stored in a that are stored in a database. And as you can see, we synced twenty signatures along with five manifest and blobs and backs. So with this, once you are just, once you publish and distribute those images and set a correct verification policy that is placed under the containers policy JSON, you will be allowed to pull all those images. So right now, I have synced images, and what will happen if I just push another image, my current signature, I've already initialized a new GPG keyring for user called loopbox, and I'll just show you how to push image to the top registry and we'll show you how to set up a verification policy to enable users to pull um, that image. So let me just do command push. Let me just change the policy for a second. Let me set it back to default. And I'll just remove this old entry. It's not important for us right now. And I will do the same call once again. So right now we are pushing a new image 
to the pulp registry along with its signatures. Well, changing my. You need to add dash dash remove signatures. Yes. Was it an image which was uh, signed the previous? Yes, time? it was already signed. Mm -hmm. I need to remove the signatures. I... Sorry. And there is like not a straightforward explanation on why you need to do that uh, because the clients do not guarantee the recompression algorithm because whenever you pull an image from a remote source and then push it back to another source it does the it uncompresses the image and then recompresses it back and sends this to the registry and so depending on the client implementation the client does not guarantee the uh, recompression which can lead to the digest change of the layers and uh, that's why you need to remove the previously originated signatures because you know the payload of the image will change during the recompression mm -hmm. exactly and also those signatures are stored currently in a local six store and that's why i had to add this option as well so right now by pushing a new image to the pulp registry, we just created a new distribution under the base path, blueblossomware slash test. And right now we can pull that content without any issues. I hope so. Okay, and once we change the verification policy, reject all unknown content or basically content from unknown registries that were not verified, I should not be able to pull any content from localhost. And now if I add a new entry as an administrator to the user's machine like this. Yes. With the path to my key, public key. should be able to consume the content once again since it was signed by no one authority and i also added a new entry to the verification policy well let me just okay, sorry. Cool. And I, you can see that I was able to pull the content, sign content after changing the verification policy. So with regards to this, we also provide a specific common use cases and examples and ways how to configure signing services, signing scripts, and stuff like that on our project doc web page. And this is probably all from my side. Thank you for watching and paying attention to the presentation. Yes, Grant. Lubash, um, and again, this is just to get this straight in my head. 
I'm a I'm a user of pulp. I have some corporate signing vault, key vault, or or signing process. So I would just have my own signing script that knows how to talk to my company's signing service that I would that I would hand to the pulp machinery. Yeah. Yes, actually, there is one demo or workflow I wanted to show you and to mention you that you can just freely create uh, new signing service by just running Pulp Core Manager and adding the signing service. And with this signing service, you can in a centralized way retrospectively just sign all your content currently present in a specific repository. So you as an administrator, you can set up workflows or cron jobs to regularly sign content. And this is this is actually the reason why we introduced the signing services just to add a way to administrators to sign existing content in a centralized way. Lobos, do you happen to have in your uh, bash history uh, some calls which would show the signing endpoint from the from within Pulp API? Uh, for Pulp Container? Yeah, for example. We, we can just run some of the examples right now if you don't mind so once you run bulk core manager at signing service there is no signing service created for you along with a public key that is very important for your use case and since we have we can just sync a new uh, you know, repository and just sign all the content in it via the signing service. Or, and <clears throat> is it going to be signed when it's syncing or whenever you do take an action? So you need to take an additional action to sign the content. And I'm going to show you right now how to do that. Awesome. It just needs to send a post request to sign endpoint of a specific container repository, either for a push repository or just regular container repository, specify future based path that will be used for verification purposes. In my case, but it be um, slash test. This is basically the, the base path or base name of a distribution. That's the place where the repository will be published. And the sign. signed version will be published. Yeah. Yes. Basically, yeah. the place where the repository will be published along with the signatures. And I'm going to specify manifest signing service. And yeah, go on. Yeah, and the signatures are actually stored as part of the repository? Or yeah. are they it's stored? An, they are stored as part of a repository as another content type, content unit. And yeah. as you can see after running the sign task, there is a new repository version created. And as you can see, just new signatures were added to the repository. That's cool. Um, at the beginning of your demo, you had mentioned like a SIG store for the repository for like the registries that's provided by Red Hat. Um, is there plans to have a pulp integrate with like a SIG store or something like that for the signatures that it creates? And is that even necessary? Yeah, Pulp has its own SIG store, let's say, because all the signatures are just uh, 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 are our, our, our signatures are available on the extensions API. And basically, 
the pub integrates with the Sigstar, so it provides a capability to store signatures like Sigstar and also to uh, enable users to consume the content. So pub has both Sigstar and registry as well already. Um, one... Dennis, to clarify, uh, the Sigstar word is a bit overused, and just to be aware, uh, there is a place. Probably... Yeah, yeah. Sure, sorry. The six star project uh, is a bit different from the terminology of uh, container six store. In this case, uh, six store is just a place for storing signature. It's not necessarily like related to the six store project. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one of the things, just like you're saying, to be aware of is that um, six store is a little bit like Let's Encrypt in the sense that there's a big installation that's globally used and known. Um, but SIG store is also, as a term, just like you're saying, is, is confusing, is also, in this case, a protocol that is being used to um, allow um, container clients to produce, push and pull and interpret in a structured way signatures. And so you could use a SIG store that is not the big global one in the sky. And I think that's what Lubash means when he says, Pulp is acting like a SIG store in this case because your client is um, using that protocol when, as it interacts with Pulp. Exactly. Thank you. Cool. Lubash, I've got a, a, a question. A workflow that we see in RPM land in terms of signing content is where he, uh, the, the user fills a repository with content and signs it with, say, the beta, uh, the beta release key and releases it to the world and people use it on their systems and then once we've we've gone through that process we want to we want to release the same content now we want it to be signed with the the ga key so if i'm if i were using this process i know i, I you've shown us how to go from this is a repository full of unsigned content to i'm going to sign everything if i resign that content does it lose? Does it get rid of the um, the signatures from the first signing attempt? Is that are those only associated with the previous repo version, and now the, the new repo version has the new signatures, or do we? Is it an additive process? The signatures are not removed after resigning the content. They're still present in the pop. Okay. You have to remove content first to remove signatures as well. Okay. And so there are multiple signatures in that repository? Yeah, we may, that may end up in a state where there are multiple signatures created by different authorities and cool. reference seeing the same content. Part of the signature uniqueness constraint is a timestamp. So willingly, you can sign with the same key uh, same content multiple times, and as many times you sign it, that many times the signature will be produced because the timestamp is different. Ah, uh, interesting. Yeah. That makes sense. Interesting. Okay. Okay, and some of this is going to be specific to the the plugin or the content type too, because different kinds of content are going to have different ways of defining where their signatures go and and how all that works. Exactly. Yeah. And, well, and so question. Um, the sign API is for a repository. <clears throat> and um, if you sign, you know, whatever you had latest yesterday, and then you um, push some more content to that repository and you sign it again today, does the do you end up getting two signatures for the content that existed there yesterday? Yes. And so then you have, you end up with, okay. Just a new signature. Yeah. You can okay. also selectively sign, like you don't necessarily need to sign whole repo all the time. Okay, this is, okay. This is kind of what I was trying to figure out. Thank you. Right, so and that sign in point, there are parameters you can add don't remember exactly which ones they are, but you can specify a list of tags you want to assign. Perfect. 
Yeah, yeah, okay. And that's exactly the kind of interface I was hoping this had. Yeah, I think there, one of the things about signing is, for me at least, I have to actually go through you know, real world workflows to get into my head exactly who's doing what and where and when and who owns which SSH keys and who owns which signing keys, because there's a lot of moving parts here because that's the way the process works. Um, uh, but y'all are definitely the experts in container land. So I am assuming this is the way it's supposed to work <laughs> for containers. <laughs> We have any other questions for Lubosch and the signing service stuff? Okay. Um, barring any other questions, Daniel, can you uh, stop the recording for us, please?